today. My name is Brenda and I'm the director of programming at Sea Kids Dream. I wanted to let you know a little bit about what we're doing and what we're, uh, who we are and what we're doing today. Um, Sticky Stream provides service learning programs to schools so their students can gain important leadership skills while making the world a better place. Some of the student leaders at our schools who participate in our service learning programs weren't um, able to complete their in-person interviews with local nonprofit organizations before schools closed. So we are hosting these organizations here so students can do virtual interviews. These interviews are important so students can get their questions answered and take what they learn to decide the best way to help the issues that are important to them. Today, we are so happy to be hosting Naomi from the YWCA Columbus. Welcome. Thank you. Um, students, we can go ahead and get started. And if you have any questions, um, and I also have some questions that students have sent me um, ahead of time. So, um, Let's see if I get any questions here. And if not, I will start with the questions that I have. Getting my feed on my computer, on my, on my phone. <laughs> okay, terrific. So let's start off by um, a student question. And uh, why and when was your organization started? Um, so we, I don't know the exact year that we were started, um, but we are YWCA Columbus, and so we actually are a branch of a national organization, which is YWCA USA. Um, so our mission statement is to eliminate racism and empower women. So that's the mission statement of all YWCA, which is nationally. So there are different YWCAs and cities all around the country. Um, within YWCA Columbus, we like to dig a little bit deeper into our mission statement um, through providing dignity to all. So I'm sure throughout the interview, I'll talk a little bit more about the programming and the work we do. We really focus on housing and homelessness um, and then also educating the community and empowering the community to dig deeper into that mission. Terrific, terrific. Um, does your organization, as another student wanted to know, does your organization work with any other organizations? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we work with other organizations. As you can imagine, homelessness is a very large issue within the whole country, but especially in Columbus. Um, so we work with other organizations that are tackling the same issue. Um, we do a lot with Community Shelter Board. They oversee a lot of our um, programming and different uh, like our family center is what we do and a lot of housing opportunities. Um, in addition, we work with different nonprofits to provide resources. So for example, we have our family center, which is an emergency shelter for families that are experiencing homelessness. Um, and we provide resources for them while they're in the shelter, but we also work with other organizations once they get out that we can connect these individuals with because we want them to be successful in the long run, not just with the services that we can provide. So we work with a lot of different nonprofits and organizations around Columbus to help provide the mission and help individuals to be as successful as they can be. Terrific. Um, another student question is, um, how many volunteers do you have every year? Um, so we have right around 4,000 volunteers every year, which is amazing. Um, a lot of our volunteer opportunities take place at our family center. Um, so we can host groups and that's where a lot of the larger numbers come in, whether it be hosting a meal, hosting an activity, doing a large outdoor project at our family center. Um, and then we also have volunteers who help with some of our large fundraisers um, or special events that we have at our other um, location, which is our women's, pres or women's residency program. Terrific. Um, Ridgewood would like to know with COVID, what has changed for you guys? A lot has changed. That's a great question. Um, so first, most of our staff, we still have to serve ex individuals that are experiencing homelessness. So we have all of our essential workers are currently working in person. Everybody else has gone to remote working. So we're working from home um, within our women's residency program and our family center, which our women's residency program, we house 91 women that are experiencing it's permanent supportive housing. So they all were homeless for a year or longer prior to coming to us. Um, and we provide that housing and resources for them. And then in our family center, we house up to 65 families that are experiencing homelessness and that's more emergency temporary housing. Um, so we can't just stop what we're doing. These individuals are still experiencing homelessness even during a pandemic. Um, we absolutely see things that are getting worse as people are being laid off. Um, it's harder to find jobs harder to pay rent. So our numbers we anticipate will go up. Um, so within that, we've had to 
work to increase social distancing at both locations. Um, at our women's residency location, every woman has her own apartment. Um, so it can be kind of difficult and lonely for them. So we're trying to provide activities that the women can do, um, jigsaw puzzles, um, different activity books or crossword puzzles, anything that can keep them busy. And then at our family center, we have, it's all family. So we have a lot of kids there. Um, so we are trying to do activities during the day to keep the kids busy because they can't go to school. Um, and we also, we serve three meals a day. So we've added extra servings so that um, there is more space between meals um, to increase social distancing and comply with the governor's orders. Um, we've increased cleaning at both locations. It's been crazy, I'm sure, as everyone can imagine, but um, our team has really stepped up and we're doing everything we can to protect the individuals that we're serving, protect our staff, um, and make sure that we can still work towards our mission and help these individuals that are experiencing homelessness. Terrific, terrific. Um, Ridgewood had a follow-up question on um, a couple questions on the volunteers. Um, what is, what do your volunteers do and also age limit for your volunteers? Yeah, so um, we have a ton of different opportunities, mostly at our family center. Um, obviously right now we are not allowing any volunteers and we really wanna protect our um, residents and our staff. So we are limiting all visitors, um, but hopefully this will pass soon and we can resume volunteer activities. Um, I miss seeing all my volunteers every day, but um, the biggest way to get involved is to help host a meal. So we have groups that come in and will provide a meal and help serve it. We also have groups that will just come in and serve. Our kitchen will make the meal and you come in and help serve. Um, there really are no age limits for that. If you're under 15, you can't be in the kitchen helping cook, but we still need help with serving and cleaning the dining area um, and interacting with the residents during meals. Um, we also have on the weekends opportunities to come in and host an activity. So um, when school's in session, and even during the summer, we have a daycare on site, but um, on the weekends, everybody's back at the family center. And if the weather's bad, it can get a little crazy. You can't really go outside. Um, so we have groups that come in and host activities, whether that be a game like trivia or bingo, or if it's nice outside, you can play a game outside um, or even like an educational lesson. We had a gymnastics team come in one time and do, they set up mats all around the family center. Um, just to hang out with the kiddos and provide some fun and entertaining opportunities on the weekends. Um, we also have donation organizing. So all of our toiletries, everything that supplies our families um, kind of stays in one big closet that we have. And so we need help all the time with organizing our donations, organizing that closet, keeping it clean. Um, and that also no age limits, same with the activity host. Um, we do have an opportunity to help babysit as well. And that does have an age limit. You have to be over 18 to help out with that because you're helping out with the kiddos um, while parents are taking classes. Um, but those are our main volunteer opportunities that we have at our family center. Great. Um, Ridgewood um, wants to know what will happen if your location fills up? Um, are you trying to find more space during this time? How's all that happening? Yeah, that's a great question. So in Columbus, if you are experiencing homelessness, you call the homeless hotline. So that is a number that is run by a separate nonprofit and any person that is experiencing homelessness can call this number and they'll do a questionnaire and the um, person on the other side of the line will help pair you up with the best, the shelter that best fits you. Um, so in Columbus, we are a family shelter, so we keep the family together. Um, and then there also is the Van Buren Center, which also houses families. So luckily between the two locations, we are pretty good at being able to balance. Van Buren has more flexibility in their rooms and they can adapt more if, because they serve single men, single women, and families. So if we see higher numbers of families, they can adapt more of their um, numbers and rooms where we're pretty set at 65. But luckily between the two locations, if you're a family and you're experiencing homelessness, you will have a place to sleep at night. That's great, that's great. Um, so um, Ridgewood also wants to know, what are you most in need of right now? Items, money, what, you know, what do you guys need the most right now? Yeah, so right now, um, our biggest need is homemade face masks. Um, we have enough for our staff. However, we need to have more for our residents that we serve at our family center. We have about 200 people right now. And then at our women's residency, we have 87 women. Um, so that's around 300 people that we need to provide face masks for um, just to keep everybody safe. Um, as you can imagine, 
it, we would love to provide one for everyone. We would love to provide five for everyone um, mm -hmm. so that you can wash them so that you, in case you lose one or drop one when you're going outside, um, you'll have another one. So that's our biggest need. Um, like everywhere else, we also are in need of cleaning products. It is difficult to find. Um, so like disinfectant wipes is a huge need. Um, and then, like I said before, um, our women at our women's residency program are kind of struggling with the social isolate isolation. And so we're really trying to provide activities for them to keep them busy. Um, so that's another huge need of crossword puzzles, adult coloring books, um, a deck of cards, things that I'm sure you all are doing to keep yourselves busy as well um, is another need that we have. Perfect, terrific. Um, also, um, Ridgewood also wants to know, is there a limit on how long families can stay with you? No, so when families arrive in our family center, within 48 hours, they are paired with a family advocate who is kind of like their caseworker. They work with them to create a goal plan. And that goal plan is specific to the family that has arrived. Um, different families have different barriers and different obstacles that they are going through. And so each goal plan is different. But as long as that family is working towards a goal plan and doing what they need to do to help move on, um, they can stay as long as they need. Our average length of stay was around 45 days. Um, now with the crisis, our numbers are going up a little bit. Um, it's difficult to be looking for apartments, looking for housing right now. Um, so the goal plans have kind of adapted to fit the crisis. Um, and we're hoping that we can resume once all of this passes. Um, but of course, things are gonna look a little different for a little bit. Um, I have another question. Um, how many um, families do you usually help in a year? Another student question. Um, I would have to do the math. We, like right now we have about 46 families um, during the winter. So I've only been working with YWCA Columbus for about seven months now. Um, so I can only speak on what I've seen, but in the winter we were a little bit higher. We were closer to that 65 number. So we have 50 rooms, but we can house up to 65 families and those extra 15 families um, sleep on the floor until a room becomes available for them. So the extra 15 is in our overflow. And definitely in the winter, we saw um, more overflow families. Um, right now we're a little bit under our 50 capacity, but that, that changes every day. We have families coming and going every day. Um, I do know summer is the most difficult time for families experiencing homelessness. The kids are out of school. Um, our numbers tend to rise while I haven't been here to see that in person. Um, it's something we do anticipate will happen. So we're usually right around that 50 number if they're not higher. Um, let's see. Um, another student question is, how do you make the public aware of what you do in your location? That is a great question. Um, so of course we use social media like a lot of other organizations do. That's definitely one of our biggest ways to get the word out is through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, along with that, we also have a lot of support in the community from people that volunteer with us, um, we also have different educational events that we do. So we have programming for young women that are entering the workforce. We have programming for middle school girls in the community. Um, we have before and after school care um, in the Westerville and Gahanna City Schools. Um, and then we also have large fundraisers. And so we have a lot of people who support us through our different avenues, through the different missions and the different ways that we get involved with the community. Um, and with that, we see a lot of people who support us, um, especially also uh, we use email a lot to keep our constituents, the individuals who support us engaged with what we're doing and up to date with what we're doing and how they can continue to support us. Um, another student question I have is um, if we do donate money to you, what would you use the money for? Um, so you, something that's unique and special about YWCA is that if you want it to your money to go to a specific place you can say that and we'll make sure it gets there um something that i oversee and something that we always love is helping um to fund a meal so to serve our families like i said we serve breakfast lunch and dinner every single day 365 days a year so that can get pretty expensive when we're um, serving around 200 to 300 people every single meal um so you can help fund a meal it's 500 dollars for our kitchen to prepare a lunch or dinner and 300 dollars for a breakfast so that's a great way um to provide funding 
Also, like I said, you can provide funding through toiletries, things that we, material donations um, and items that we need to support our families. If you would prefer your money to go to women's residency where we have those 87 women, that can be done as well. Um, so the money would go towards supporting the individuals that we serve. And if you want it unrestricted, we can do that too, so. Um, another question from um, Ridgewood is they want to know what made you decide to work with YWCA? That's a great question. One of my favorite questions to answer. Um, so I graduated from Ohio State last year and I knew I wanted to go to nonprofit work. Um, I actually, the summer after graduating and the summers all throughout college, I had worked at a summer camp. Um, and within that summer camp, we went volunteering at a different organization every single day. So I was working with middle schoolers, volunteering with them at different locations all around Columbus. And one of my favorite places to go was YWCA to volunteer. We would help organize donations every time we went. Um, and I just loved being able to be like hands-on service. And it was a great volunteer experience. I loved what the organization was doing and supporting women. And um, when I saw that they were hiring, I knew it was a perfect job. I was so excited to be able to apply for YWCA and I'm honored to work for this great organization. Great, great. great. Um, so Ridgewood wants to know, what family has a pet? Do you let them bring their animal or what do you, what do, you do? Yeah, so unfortunately we cannot have animals in the family center. Um, there are a lot of great organizations around Columbus um, that will temporarily house your animal if you are experiencing homelessness. Um, so we try to connect them. That's something that I actually created a couple months ago as a resource um, that we can give to families if that is something that they are worried about, if they do have a pet and it's preventing them from entering the shelter. Um, there are different organizations all around um, that will help house your pet, pay for it um, while you're experiencing homelessness and until you can get back on your feet. Um, is there anything else that you want to share with uh, with any with us about you know what uh, the Y does or anything like that? <laughs> um, I feel like I've covered a lot of it. Um, just the biggest way to get involved is once we get back to normal is to help volunteer. Um, and then also just supporting us, especially through material donations right now is our biggest need. Um, we're going families are coming and going, as I've said before, and as you can imagine, some families will come in with everything they need, um, clothing wise and toiletry wise, and some families will come in with nothing. Um, and so we really rely on the community 100% to help support us and support our families that we serve and provide all those toiletries, um, whether it be deodorant or shampoo, a toothbrush, toothpaste. Um, so just that's always something that we need no matter what we're going through. Um, so there are a lot of ways to get involved and it's something Homelessness is something that's prevalent in our community, and it's something that I think we all can gather together to help support these families and support the in individuals, um, because you never know who will experience this. And it's we rely on the community so much to come together, and we I think it's all our duty to gather together to support one another um, during times of need. Terrific, terrific. Well, um, I think that's about all the questions I have coming in right now. So if you guys, if anybody wants to learn more about the YWCA, you can go to our website at ckidsdream.org and go to our service hub. We have a, a, a page set up about the Y. And then from there, you can link to the uh, Y's page to learn more about what they do. Thank you so much, Naomi, for coming in and sharing uh, with our students uh, about the what the Y does. Thank you so much. It's been an honor. All right, have a good day. Thank you, you too.